What's up everyone? How you all doing today? Really excited for another record shop Twitch event. Always love these little fireside chats. Get the inside scoop with your favorite record shop employees. And if it's that if that's not me or Lisa, we bring other valued guests like Mr. Poria here. Really excited to see you. How you doing, Poria? I'm doing good. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, really glad you could join us today. Um, let's give Chad a minute to come on in. If you're out there, be sure you say hi to us. Get your questions ready. Uh, Poria here, he's on our dev team. I'm sure you've got lots of things you'd like to ask him about. But he's also on an NDA. He's got certain things that he can't really talk about. So yeah, zipper lips. But yeah. mostly, we're really excited about mixing. Going to get into that for sure. Um, Want to hear a little bit about your background too. So should be a fun day. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Also, don't forget, we've got OB joining. He'll be joining us here as soon as we get done with a nice little intro to mixing here with Poria. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a good day of catching up with the Record Shop fam. Nick Imps, good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well today. Cheers, cheers. Anybody else out there in, from our Discord fam, Record Shop land? Here we go. Now I can see the chat. Okay, see it? <laughs> yes, I'm sleeping so much better. Oh my god, though. <laughs> yeah, like hard. My heart was beating when I hit uh, the button, like to make it work that day. Whew. Yeah, y'all, y'all don't see a lot of what happens behind the scenes, but um, and it's not that often that I'm super in touch with someone on the dev team when we're launching something. But yeah, Poria was busting ass on this to make sure that it worked and went over well so really appreciate all that and i'm sure we'll get to hear some of those war stories in a second <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm glad you like it LFA. yeah mix master there we go we have to get you your own discord title hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> good to see you Phileas. yeah you all signed the nda when you made your record shop account there's a top secret NDA somewhere in there in the terms and services that you're not allowed to talk about the service that you're using. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like something an NDA would say. Um, yeah, El Jefe is excited for the future. Right, and we're also just kind of scratching the surface with mixing, so I'm curious to hear some of the things you have in mind for, for future possibilities. Um, we got the Reg1 out there, Astral Fusion, Shock. All right, looks like we've got a quorum here. Good bit of the fam um cool cool so then yeah so for those that didn't hear already we have poria here which way is it this way this way joining us really excited to have him here uh he works on our development team and is the mastermind behind mixing um working really really hard on it to get it out um but first let's uh let you introduce yourself love to hear a little bit about you like what you like what's your background sure yeah so uh, my name is Toria. I am from Arizona. Um, I'm currently like based in Medellin, Colombia. And my God, the weather's so good here. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, what do I like? I really like um, like getting to program sort of like fun and interesting features. Um, so stuff like this mixing was just like, it's exactly up my alley. It's exactly what I like to do. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel like a lot, I think a lot of times programmers get stuck in like super lame sort of like work, but no, not in this case. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's great that you get to do stuff that you're excited about. Are there any other features that you did in the past that you were like super excited about, or? I uh, yeah, let's see. My very first contribution to Record Shop was the little um, sort of uh, waffle like pie chart that you see that shows like how many have been burned how many are in yes i love that stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> that one's awesome yeah thanks yeah it was it just uh like i was just gonna make a regular sort of pie chart um and then i was like oh wait a minute it kind of looks like the the waffle let's see if this works and it did so yeah that was a good design really team awesome was kind of like thank you design team was kind of like and no, that wasn't really our intention to for <laughs> the waffle should be used <laughs> Visualizer, but whatever. Yeah, I thought I saw some chat a little bit early on where like maybe we need to change it. I think I maybe may have seen right. some of that going around, but I'm glad they didn't because I thought it was a stroke of genius personally. So 
but maybe that's why I'm not a designer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Me too. But um, didn't you play a part in the hand feature as well? Yeah, that was the like the second thing I did. That's a huge one. Was, that was so cool. With the hand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I I obsessed over like every little um sort of animation in that like just how bouncy the cards would be like when you when you you know you'd move them around and we open the hand and yeah. Oh, it looks awesome. You did a great job on it. Love it. Thanks. Yeah. I know users were really excited too with the little improvements that um, came in probably, what, like a month ago with all the little like sizing adjustments for mobile because it was getting a little bit tricky for some uh, users. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that was, that was long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but no, it's really fun. Like I love the like extra dimension it's added to a lot of not just like the platform overall, but with like challenges and rewards and things. And even with mixing now, what we're doing, super, super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Thank maybe, you, yeah. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your story and like how you got into record shop, like how you learned about it in the first place. Like, was it something you're like, Hey, I want to check this thing out. Or did someone like, we really, really need you. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> curious, I'm curious what the intro story was like. Right. So yeah, I had been job hunting. I think this was like last like the end of last summer i'd been job hunting um wasn't really like that excited about any of the places i was applying to but I was just like you know whatever i just want to just want to get a job um at one point i like bombed an interview that i had been really really like excited about and i just mm-hmm. totally totally bombed it and i went onto some discord group like a like a programmer's discord group and I complained to this guy that like, man, like I did so badly. And he said, why don't you, um, you know, talk to like, he told me to talk to Peter, um, who I didn't know at the time. Oh, okay. And yeah. And I looked at the job posting. It was, it was a record shop job posting. And it said something like, you know, 10 years of experience and like all these like really like scary requirements that I didn't meet. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't think that's for me. I don't think I quite meet the bar. Um, but, and he told me, he, he, I think he just like posted the the quote, right? Like you miss like 100% of shots you don't take. Nice. I was like, I, I was like okay, I'll give it a shot. And I, I yeah, I talked to uh, to Peter, to Trinity. Yeah, um, on the Discord, he goes by Trinity. The boy and with the record the, shop tattoo. Him, him, yeah. <laughs> And when I told him who had referred me, he was like, immediately, like, I had his attention. Um, so, yeah, I wrote a lot to that guy who referred me. His name is Least Bad, but probably don't. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. No, nah, probably not. <laughs> He's not like a famous developer. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. But then, uh, when I, after my first with, with Trinity, um, I was like, this company is so freaking cool like this is like this is so cool i didn't even like like comprehend that i could be so excited to have a job like you know like a place like this so over the weekend i just like went crazy and i made this um this sort of like pack opening demo oh Um, i saw it it? yes i did see it it was oh it blew my mind (laughs) Do you have it? I want. To, I kind of want to show people. Oh, maybe we shouldn't. Oh, maybe we it? shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think it has some some things we don't have the rights to. But uh, yeah, it true. was super super cool. Yeah, Thank I you. remember seeing that. <laughs> maybe we can describe it. Yeah. So, yeah, like basically, um, you know, like on Top Shot when you when you open the pack, there's like some kind of like a spinning animation. And there's like some music and stuff. So like, I had no idea, like, you know, what, um, how record shop's pack, pack opening experience went because at the time there was none. Like it was actually before launch. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was like, right, like in the, I think like a few weeks before the, like the real launch. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna um, sort of take inspiration from what, what Top Shot's doing and, but then give it like a sort of EDM like twist. So instead of like a pack, um, like the, the packs are like a, like a record 
sort of case, you know, like you yeah, get a what vinyl. Do you, what do you call that? Sleeve, the record sleeve. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like that, and then like the the vinyl would like kind of slide out a little bit, and it had like the like in the middle of the vinyl where you normally have like you know the art. It was like something related to the the um, actually no, I don't, think was, I don't think there's usually art in the middle, but I just put art in there. there is. Yeah, there usually oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. And then it would like spin around and it had like this like bass drop sound effect and the, you know, the clip would play and yeah, it was really dramatic. <laughs> cool. Well, we're all still waiting for, for that, that drop opening animation whenever you get a second to, to incorporate it in production. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I would love to. <laughs> it's super There's so cool. many things I want to do. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I remember seeing that. That was cool, and I, I, can't, I think it was Obi that posted it in just like our staff chat. Um, and it's just like y'all have to check this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was, was honestly awesome. nervous, like sending it in. I was like, I don't know if they're gonna like it. Like, <laughs> and then Peter was like, "This is freaking awesome!" I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, a few weeks later, I was for a record shop. Here you are. Well, we're so glad <laughs> to have you for sure. Um. Cool. Well, let's talk more about like what you do here. I know we've already mentioned some of the projects you've had a hand in. Um, I don't even know. Like, what is your like official title? Is it so developer? I guess, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, software engineer. Um, <laughs> I think I'm I'm kind of like a full stack dev because I do you know the front end stuff and the back end stuff. But I think I do specialize in the front end stuff. Like anytime there's um, not anytime, but like oftentimes, if there's some kind of um, rich user interaction, like um, like the hand, you know, um, I usually tend to get put on that, which is awesome because it's my favorite stuff to work on. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Like from conversations past, it was it was more focus on like kind of gamified UI mm. mechanics, if I remember correctly. Is that typically the sort of thing you focus on? Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Things cool. that feel a little bit like more, more, yeah, game even just like a website. Yeah. Yeah. Like a website. Click this yeah. link, go to this thing. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, cool. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about mixing then. Um, that's really what we wanted to get into. Can you kind of talk about, I guess let's, for people who don't already know what mixing is, maybe give them a, a quick overview. Um, be good to hear kind of your perspective on it. Uh, and then also, um, you know, we can give a little update on the mixing challenge. I can talk about that. Uh, yeah, so let's start. Let's just start with mix, mixing. What is it? What is mixing? Why is it exciting? Sure. <laughs> mixing, yeah, it's, um, I guess, to put it simply, it's combining multiple um, collectibles into something new, something different. Um, and yeah, I mean, I keep it, I'm keeping it vague because I think there's like a lot of room for, um, you know, like different ways of using that feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously like the most basic sort of mixing, which I think anyone who plays, you know, video games with crafting mechanics is familiar with is like, yeah, just put these three things together and get this brand new thing. But um, I think there's a uh, there's a lot of you know a lot more interesting things we can do with it, and without getting too spoilery, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm watching my words now carefully. Yeah, <laughs> I'm watching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's pretty much mixing. <laughs> so there's a lot of exciting possibilities. I know Obi's talked a lot about how having this feature is going to unlock a lot of like what we had in cool. mind so did you see obi's message <laughs> no i didn't see it where is he he just posted in the in the chat is he in here in the yeah he just, in he the just Twitch? posted in the chat yeah oh, okay there he is a... oh but my god obi even... why are you doing this to us <laughs> i don't even know what that is oh my goodness is there, there he goes difference? <laughs> <laughs> all right well you heard it here first on the record shop twitch stream that there's a hidden <laughs> recipe out there so go <laughs> go put every single card you have in the mixing table and see if you can figure it out 
but that's cool i'm excited i'm really excited for it. i know there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff that that comes out of it um so, and uh you came here with a demo right is that all set up and ready to go i do have a demo yeah yeah um, and this one's a little bit spoilery because it mm -hmm. might pertain to a certain <laughs> challenge that we're doing right now <laughs> but we we definitely wanted to show you all you know what it looks mm -hmm. like exactly and like how it works um because there was some confusion out there and discord land i know this will help but uh but yeah man the floor is yours just uh we'll bring up your your screen share here and yeah we'd love to love to see how it works and what all goes into it my screen's up okay yeah, here we go yeah so yeah you can see um got a dj mixer here in my hand because i need it um i'm gonna get a port body I didn't work on this search feature at all, but I am so grateful for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's super helpful. So let's talk about the mixer a little bit. So the the mixer, why is it that you need that? You need it in order to access this um, this uh, mixing menu. So actually, if you if you remove it from your hand, then you uh, don't have awesome. access to that anymore. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. All right, let me go. Go get it back. Sweet. Right. And for those those out there that don't know, there are two DJ mixers on Record Shop. There's one by Rocks right. as well as one by Second. Right. So there's a couple we of both options. Both have awesome out there. art. <laughs> yeah. The, oh gosh, I love the Rocks art a lot, and Second too. They're both really good. Mm -hmm. So many great artists on the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seriously. Um, okay, I'm glad I have coins. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a burning um, tutorial yeah, at the I'm same prepared. time. <laughs> right. So I'm just throwing some stuff in there. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to show off, uh, just because I love the the sound effects that um, some of our uh, content worked on. So if I, this is not a valid combination right here. So if I try. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I haven't actually done it yet, so I'm really glad. Really? I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really in. Really I'll do one more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just... <laughs> it's very satisfying. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So in the past, yeah, I had um, you know sometimes made some like picked some sound effects, um, but this time I asked the real pros because we have so many like you know uh, sound. Uh, how do you describe this? Like audibly skilled people on the team so i was like i, I mean yeah we've it. got a lot of like super talented just actual producers too i think it was yeah. uh juan who did these right blind yeah 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 exactly. yeah so if y'all know blind he's on the he's in the music over matter sets um really great dj producer but also great sound designer he did all the sounds for these which i thought was really really cool rather than like you said getting some like stock sounds from somewhere or right. something like that exactly and then, um, so here, I'm going to do it. This is going to be the real thing. So hold on to your butt. <gasps> ah, yeah. Nice. God, I love this art, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Laura's an incredible artist. Laura's so good. Hers is, hers is some of my favorite. Mm -hmm. Boom. So that's I it. I recently oh, started doing. In there. You see the yeah. reflection on that porta potty <laughs> lid? How is that even possible? So clean. <laughs> Which, I don't know if I've ever been that aggressive with my antibacterial gel. Big props to <laughs> ever cleaned this one up. <laughs> oh man, I'm actually glad I own one of these now because I was actually not getting one. I was I was trying to let uh let the community snag yeah. the most cereals so. No, that's a really good call out. Yeah, just so everyone knows, we're making sure that staff doesn't participate in these until you know the cereals have gotten higher up in the and when when there's a cereal race, right? So, um, you know, we definitely want to make sure we save the the best cereals for the community. Um, but yeah, this is super cool. Love it. That's awesome. That is mixing, and I guess this is a good example of like you said, the simplest form of what mixing could be. It's like right. Part A, part B, part C gets you a potty, a potty, pristine potty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Man, I'm so glad you did this because I hadn't seen the sound effects and the visuals yet. That's super oh, really? cool. Yeah, I mean, I knew they were there. Like I saw people talk mm -hmm. about them, but it, I haven't, I haven't done it yet. I don't think I have all the cards. I've just got the mixer and I think the bacterial and so. Um, super, here, super me, cool. I want to show off something real quick. <gasps> yeah. I'm just gonna. This is not a recipe. Don't worry. But I'm just. Throwing it <laughs> <laughs> so there's um. Oh, what? That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, We're doing it live. That was a technical difficulty. I have no idea why that happened. <laughs> it made that nothing, Obi's, so that's cool. That Obi's, new, that Obi's new secret recipe. That yeah, I think you just found <laughs> Obi's secret recipe. I don't know what that was. But, but it didn't make anything, it seems, so... <laughs> That's funny. Maybe look, hit, hit maybe maybe hit refresh. It says it's in your hand, but yeah. I don't see it there. Let's see. No, I still have it. Okay. That's super weird. All right. Well, well live bug like test with all of me. you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, Poyo's got to go, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's awesome though. Um, cool, cool. But what what were you gonna show? Um, I was just gonna show the um the little glowy like sort of portal effect um <laughs> do i dare try again one second i think if i put a few random ones in there it should be fine maybe it was just the like one Chris, card edge. <laughs> yeah let me let me hide the hide the screen share until, <laughs> until it makes it there we go there we yeah go. Woo. yeah that's so, I was trying to show. so yeah, it's it's just kind of fun. Like the um the the little glowy thing in the middle mm -hmm. is a record shop logo. Um, and originally I had just yanked some like GIF off some like you know some like Giphy website or something like that, which it's, was like perfect. Just like a stock and, photos thing. Yeah, exactly. It was, like this perfect sort of glowy um, ball of energy that really fit what I what I was going for. And um, I was using it as a placeholder. And then as we got closer to launch, I was like, man, like, I don't think I can just use this. <laughs> like, I think I need something <laughs> legit. So yeah, I asked Laura um, and Maurice, or Maurice to um, help me out, maybe make something cool. And, and honestly, I was so attached to that little ball that I had found. I was like, man, I don't know if, it, if I'm going to be, you know, um, a little bit sad to lose the ball, but no, the new one is like so much better. Like that's a record shop watch ball. So cool. Yeah, I love it. it. Looks good. It's great that it's great work from Laura too. It's a team effort, huh? We got Poria, we got Juan, we got Laura. That love was it. my favorite thing. Like so many people ended up coming together to make this thing like as cool as it is now. So yeah, that's what I love about it. Awesome. I want to show you what happens if you do if you do a really big one. This demo, I don't know. Am, am I am I going too far now? <laughs> no, no, keep it going. No, I just wanted to bring Obi on so he could he could enjoy too. So good to see you, Obi. Hey, man. Hey, Obi. Oh, yeah, you, got, you got to give us some sort of keystroke combination to like <laughs> go straight from your collection to the mixing table. Like, yeah, you know, that would be nice. <laughs> Something like that would be amazing. By the way, I know this isn't exactly that, but if anyone doesn't know, you can now shift click to put stuff in your hand. So that's oh, oh, there you go. That's that a is lot faster. Nice. Yeah. So this is getting big, right? Um, the reason I'm making it this big is just to show off that I added this little effect where the ball in the middle gets bigger, like the more um, uh, things you are putting clever. into it. So here, yeah, we're going to go with this. Obviously, it's going to fail, but it'll get is... really big before it fails. Obi, is your here secret recipe a 14-card recipe like this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just accidentally exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! So, yeah, wow, that's so cool. And even takes the time to like put them all in there. That's so great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well done, jeez! Yeah. I can't even so imagine pleasant. how you make that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Interesting programming. The code is, the code is hairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I went in there and I was like, ah, slowly back away, slowly. Back away. <laughs> oh I'm my sorry, goodness. <laughs> 
No, no, it's, I'm not saying it's Fair bad enough. code. I'm just saying it's very complicated code. Yeah. Man, uh, we were just reminiscing uh, about the Porio's demo for his um, job so, application. Still one of the most impressive ways to apply to a job I've ever seen. Yeah, it was really good. It was, it was like, here's this amazing thing I built. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Seriously, on the other side, it had exactly the effect you wanted. We were like, how fast can we hire this fucker? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that's good the only the only other notable way that someone has ever applied was back when I was running Hash Rocket. So like over 10 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. And one of the first guys we hired, I posted a blog post just saying, hey, come work at the beach uh, for Hash Rocket. And this guy named John Larkowski wrote me an email. And he was like, yes, yeah, so I'm this amazing uh, programmer and I'm really good. And blah, 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 blah. He just kind of proposed himself. And he's like, I could be down there on Monday and start on Tuesday. That was his cover letter. Like literally that was the email he sent. And we were like, wow, this guy has balls. Like wait, did he live somewhere else? Yeah, he, he lived in he lived, he lived in Madison, Wisconsin, and the job application was for Florida. Oh wow. Florida. And he just sent that email like, you know, basically assuming he was hired right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So well, we're I guess like, we got to give it a shot. Like, whoever has this much balls, yeah, we need to talk. To oh, that's awesome. But yours was even more impressive because it was not just bluster. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> and it, it fit what we had in mind so well too. It was just oh, so sure. uh, it, was it was so like, cool. This is someone that really gets it. So mm -hmm. very nice. Yeah, I was really happy when when Trudy was like showing me <laughs> screenshots of your guys' internal conversation, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you like got it. the you got the inside scoop. That's I good. Scoop, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you didn't seem that surprised when I told you how the how the company reacted. You're like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, yeah, I was no. worried. Like, there's been times in the past where I've done that. You know, for a, a company I really wanted to work at, and like it just got like lost in the cracks. I didn't hear back, and I was like, wow, way to waste. You know, way to waste a day. Like, yeah. or or in that case, two days. But you know. I was glad well, when I heard back. You must not have seen it, which is easy to do, right? It's easy for people not to see it the way mm -hmm. the way things go. It's pretty sad. Right. But yeah. hey, we're we're glad you went for it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but yeah, man. So that is mixing everyone. And uh we're really excited for it. I know this is just the beginning too. Literally we wanted to start with the most basic kind of simple mixing event slash challenge that we could do. Um, oh, that's cool. Clear noise. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so really excited. I'm sure you're working all, all sorts of other awesome stuff for the future. Um, He's working on hints? some amazing stuff for the future. Yeah, any any hints or teasers? <laughs> it, invo it involves polysexual reproduction. <laughs> okay, yes. okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. All right. Still job related, by the way. This is <laughs> still job. I'm talking my personal life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah, no, but there's there's a lot of good stuff going. Community sentiment felt really good today. Yeah. No. No doubt. Um, it's good to uh, see some like. Sense. Yeah, some some good conversations going on there. Um, no, I mean, I think things have been pretty good overall. You know, there's always people that are upset. Um, you know, we we do our best to to make everyone as happy as we can. And but I think with all the great things that are rolling out, you know, all the stuff that you've been working really hard on, Poria and the rest of the team, um, I'm really excited for tomorrow's drop. That's going to be really cool. We haven't done a drop in so long, and I'm a huge fan of UD Records, so this is going to be. A, a big one for me and I think a lot of people are really excited about it too but yeah the the conversation in discord right here I saw you joining in on it it's really cool to see what people think about you know where the music industry is and where they think it might go uh, I thought that was a curious take from some people to to kind of equate the Netflix like like kind of video TV industry to to the music industry, and some sounds like some people kind of see it going that way. I was curious what your thoughts are on that kind of that thought, Obi. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> sorry about that. 
No, no. I was just saying uh, I, I, from the conversation today, it was to me, it was really interesting the parallels that some people put between the Netflix kind of business model, streaming model, and where they might see music going, where like big labels start having their own like kind of houses and things like that, like you see with Disney Plus and Netflix and Paramount Plus or whatever it is. Uh, yes and no, because I mean, those, those the, I, I think it's a little bit apples and oranges because the subscription model, because it, those things are subscription models, right? Mm -hmm. And like with these marketplaces, like part of the vision for let the music pay in the long term, the reason we're called let the music pay, not record shop Inc. The, the company behind record shop is that eventually we're planning to have like a whole network of sites that cater to certain audiences, but all work on the same underlying marketplace. So And I think I've mentioned that before on, on in the other venues, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. it's like a, a nugget or whatever, whatever. But like, I, they're, given the way that the artifacts and the gamification is like kind of directed towards electronic music, like I do think that there's room to expand, you know, to other kind of DJ oriented music, so hip hop, maybe maybe reggaeton, like other things that involve nightlife and festivals and stuff like that. But like to start mixing in classical music and jazz and you know other things like that feels like it would be could be weird. So I mean, it's not a decision we've fully finalized yet. But but it it would always kind of be like the same fundamental product. Where if you wanted to sell, you know, one of those collectibles across the board. But I'm I'm also not answering your question because I'm I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I just thought it was a really interesting point that that the users are bringing up. Um, when I hadn't really can really thought about yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're here to chat with you. So mm -hmm. if anybody has any questions for Obi, he's in the hot seat now. <laughs> so for you, you can finally relax a little bit, not be so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, just curious, kind of like, you know, it's been what, two weeks now since our last fireside chat? No, a month, a month since we last had Obi here. Um, you know, I'm curious how you feel about some of the recent announcements we've been making, like, like with mixing and things like that. I know you said that the community sentiment is looking good, but, um, overall, like, how do you feel about this feature and kind of what it means for the future? Um, it, it is so big for the future. Like there, there's no, like, like I'm, I've been wary these days of, of, uh, being accused of hyping or you know, just saying things uh, that are not going to get any time soon. But like, this is the feature I've been waiting for for months, right? Like, and it just took a lot longer for for reasons that, in retrospect, should have been obvious. But I mean, you, you know, kind of like I, if if it were entirely up to me and we had an ideal world, like I would have rolled this out three months ago, you know, or, or more, because it's so fundamental to everything that we're doing. Um the <laughs> you can you can see when when i'm thinking about how to it. um like like essentially what, what's valuable what's valuable in this world is scarcity and these mechanics reward you know or or basically lead towards scarcity because the more that you destructively combine things the the less there are of those things right and what I think we have our finger on the pulse of, and like some of the so, some of the OGs and OGAFs have actually taught that I've talked to directly actually have an idea of what's coming. That you know, it's basically a world in which the way that you demonstrate your fandom is by how special and unique your collectibles are, and the way that we introduce collectibles that are special and unique beyond the content that the musician can actually put in there, because it's a lot of work to create the content. You know that, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, yeah is to have these kind of game mechanics that that incentivize doing cool things with your with your collectibles right i'm being vague because i don't want to give away you know like <laughs> you're doing a good job <laughs> <laughs> um you know but 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 the idea is to make it fun and i mean we get to like Korea and i get to play with the stuff that we're building right and it is definitely fun 
like when you start when you start doing some of these things like we we have um we, we have like this whole recipe builder um i'd almost take some screenshots and show it off because it's really cool software but you know it kind of lets you define um you know a fixed card that goes in or a wild card and how it matches and it's like super flexible you can put before conditions you put after conditions you can have like a specific outcome card you could say that it's a serial race uh, like the one that we did here where like it goes in the order that you craft or you can make it random if you want to keep the interest going for a while so you don't know if you're going to get that low serial number um it could do all sorts of things it could roll over like i i think we've hinted at or dropped nuggets that there's going to be crafting with stress test cards if not that's a cool nugget from from this particular twitch session but you know we do have some super cool content related to stress test cards that are coming with crafting uh, hopefully pretty soon and you know it can do things like automatically roll over from one design outcome design to another so so it kind of enables this creativity you know for us as game designers that that is so fundamental right like burning we we kind of rushed out burning because because we wanted to show you know what it was about and kind of you know it was cornerstone functionality but, but this is kind of like burning plus right like mm -hmm. uh, and and someone rightly pointed out to me on a call today like uh you know that um would, would there still be demand for burning there is for a very particular reason um the one that's obvious to anyone who's kind of like looking at this uh, objectively right now is that crafting uses up coins and there you know there would be reasons to have coins i also mentioned today but I'll repeat it for the people who are watching the stream and might have missed it on Discord, that our sound token uh, contract is live on, on, the, on the blockchain. I figured someone would find it eventually, so I, I went <laughs> to mention it. Um, and the, the part that's missing from the white paper, which I might make public sometime soon, has to do with the tokenomics and the plan for the fungible token as the raw material cost. So uh, something that I feel you know, kind of good about talking because I see that it's coming now soon is revealing that the the coins, the face value of the coins corresponds to an equal amount of sound token that's staked to that card. And we are offering stakeholder rewards very soon uh, in favor of the artists for uh, as rewards for what is staked by their fans. And we will give recognition to the fans because essentially what it's all about is is patronage right like who who is the top fans and as we do that we'll start moving towards where the rewards are for the top fans more than anything else right so we'll the guidance of course the content partners are free to do whatever they want you know our creator partners are free to do whatever they want it's up to them but i think what will naturally start happening is that the fans that generate the most stakeholder rewards for them are the ones that they will be most inclined to give freebies to and, and given the amounts of money that is possible, it could be generated here, which we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. Eventually, you know, those rewards could be quite significant. It might become party, you know, come party with me in, in Tulum. <laughs> you know, it could, it could be like physical stuff. Like, you know, I send you a signed guitar or something, you know, like, like th things like that become no brainers when you see that your top fans are generating thousands, tens of thousands or more dollars for you. Um, and the, the way that we put this all together, which is finally starting to come to light, thank God, because it's been so frustrating. It forms a virtuous cycle. I think it's completely unique in the NFT world. And when we started unveiling it, and, and now that you know we have, we're going on a year that we've been around. So I, I think we have the, our credibility to lean on, both with artists and the media, with influencers, uh, especially, especially once we have some Series A money in the mix, start bringing on some brand ambassadors. Um, you know, this could blow up really big. Like someone today was asking me, you know, how, uh, you know, early early adopters and you know, like Genesis set holders will be rewarded. I mean, with a few exceptions, like a lot of the early stuff is really low min count. is is really unique. It's going to get even more scarce with the introduction of mixing. Um, and the other things that come along with it. So, and there's still so much utility that now can finally be unveiled. I mean, if you're not, 
th this is hype, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm speaking to the community now. But regardless of that grain of salt, like if you're not sweeping floors on some of the early uh, you know, artifacts that have had utility hinted at, like, come on now. Like a lot, a lot of these early artifacts are like a dollar, two dollars sort of thing. You know, they could spike significantly when we announce utility for them. So I don't like to hype. I know it's gotten us burned before, but now that cra that uh, mixing is in place and you're able to craft these things together, like some of this utility is on the verge of getting released and it becomes a matter of where we're, um, we're almost having a sequencing issue, like where there's like too many things to announce at once, right? And Chris, you can probably <laughs> this more than I can because your team is kind of responsible for figuring out how to introduce these things to the community. Mm -hmm. and, and there is this phenomenon where if there's too much, it becomes too confusing or too, or, you know, too overloaded, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've been getting a um, you know, big shout out to the product team and the dev team. We've been getting pretty plugged into their project plans and timelines. And yeah, we're definitely seeing that already. All the stuff that's on the horizon kind of exceeds our ability to output it in a way that makes sense, along with like drops and everything else. <laughs> so it's it's going to be a challenge but we're really excited for it and then i can't wait to start to start announcing a lot of it for sure um but yeah that's really cool and like for me one of the things that i'm really excited about with mixing is like it's one more really awesome tool in our belt for things like challenges and pack drops like the things you can do with a pack drop that's planned around mixing already is, are really really exciting right they're almost like their own mini challenges within the pack drop on top of whatever challenge might be built by the actual content provider. So um, I'm really stoked for, for what we can do with that. Yeah. I mean, and there's so much I wish I could say. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's really, really biting my tongue because I mean, the list goes on and on of, of things that you, that you can and will do with this. Um, yeah. Uh, we should get to some answers. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, let's do some questions. Uh, so, uh, Jay Pizzle says, tech space moves quickly. Are you concerned a competitor could develop a similar product and build it out faster? Do you have any competitive pressure concerns within this genre or a different genre that would block you from crossing into it? Um, if someone can do this particular thing that we're doing better than us, more power to them because it's fucking hard. <laughs> like, it's or really faster hard. even. Or faster. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have any concerns. That's like the furthest away from my worries, you know, uh, in terms of someone building something faster than this, uh, stealing some of our ideas. Mm, maybe. I mean, but but there is a lot of there's a lot of prestige with being the people who pioneered certain things. And we're like so under the radar right now with some of these things that we're doing, like we're literally doing things that don't exist anywhere else already. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, we've been working with our with our PR partners to try to get coverage of it. The problem is that it's such a loud um, field, and crypto in particular is just so full of money, like just ridiculous sums of money that to get coverage in these publications, it just costs a ridiculous amount of money, right? Like the um, we talked to a prominent uh, PR crypto PR firm; they wanted twenty five thousand dollars a month with a minimum of a six month com uh, commitment. And I don't quite have doubts that they would get us coverage and things, you know, like in, in some of these crypto publications, but it's also kind of an insane amount of money, uh, you know, for us, to, for us to be spending. So we're, we're doing other, you know, other things. Once we get series A under our belt, like we'll, we'll be able to do some of that stuff. Um, and, in terms of pioneering, you know, pioneering stuff in the NFT space, I mean, it, come, it comes from the imagination of our team, you know, of Perea, of you, of John Berger, our, our product officer. Like, th that mix of talent that we have on board is is kind of hard to replicate. I mean, it's hiring, as we all know, well, inside a record shop, we all know, is super, super hard. Like, finding that talent is super, super hard. We still have a bunch of people on our engineering team that are part-time. Um, you, you know, and it's like... Well, I don't want part-time people, but we'll t we have to take them because, you know, we don't really have a choice. Like talent is at, is at a premium. So yeah, if someone else thinks they can do it, bring it on. <laughs> we'll take it, right? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, let's keep it going. I think there's one from Rye Guy, curious about 
the token staking? If you can give any more. Mm, Obi, can we get some hot deets on coins, roll, and staking? Will there ever be a straight up cut in marketplace sales for coin holders? Is the token called Sound? The token is called Sound. Um, sound is going to be by design more interesting for creators, uh, aka content partners. Uh, so your tribal traps, your bogus, you know, etc. Uh, and creators that are coming in and trying to get on the platform, it's the raw material cost. So when I'm explaining sound, um, I'll say like, you know, if you, Chris, wanted to put out a piece of vinyl, like of one of your tracks, you would have to go to the vinyl factory. They would charge you a certain amount of money for the vinyl itself, like literally the plastic mm -hmm. and the, the manufacturing costs, right? So that's the function that sound um plays in our economy it's the raw material cost that provides an intrinsic value uh to our collectibles so the the coin value on the face of the card is tied to the amount of sound that is staked inside of it um and and it provides a mechanism for giving value to those cards so when you're burning cards you're liberating coins that are then associated with you through the in-game currency um, as a proxy mechanism for you holding sound so that you don't have to go through the rigmarole having a, a wallet and you know use a decentralized exchange and like all those things um however it gives you the ability to subsidize uh, a number of things one you could apply those coins either uh potentially by themselves or through your holdings towards a particular artist. So we're give, we're going to give you mechanisms for staking uh, in a way that generates stakeholder rewards, so like a yield, you know, an interest amount that is paid out on a daily basis to the artists that those coins are, are staked for. Um, the other thing that it does, if you have a big bag, so to speak, in, in NFT terms of, of coins, is that you can use those to subsidize entry to the platform of new artists. Um, so this is roughly equivalent to the way that like DAOs are foreseen as working in Web3 or work, you know, sort of thing where people can band together to subsidize certain initiatives. To us, those initiatives are curation related. And then, you know, it means that you can basically discover and break artists on Record Shop. And as that becomes more the dominant mechanic, we will take a step back from being the ones that curate and bring talent onto the platform. Because I was listening to um, the founders of Nifty Gateway on a podcast interview the other day, and they made an interesting point that established artists don't wake up every day going, "How can I create awesome NFTs?" You know, <laughs> for my fans. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, wake, they wake up every day. You know, in our case, uh, saying, how can I be a better DJ? How can I be a better producer? You know, how can I get more pure cocaine, you know, from my dealer or whatever the case may be? They're not thinking about NFTs uh, day in, day out, the way that some of the new breed of creators are. So we want to enable um, the players to be that force for bringing content in and making sure that they defend the quality of the platform. Because when you have open platforms that anyone can come and sign up for, you get fucked up situations like Audius, where 80% of the content is copyrighted, you know, and being stolen, like OpenSea, which has ridiculous problems. They just, you know, they had to do like some sort of big reset. They, they cut back on free mining and they had to roll back and like sold chaos. Or like my old platform, uh, Tune, you know, wh which uh, is now called Rocky. And like the years that I spent putting music on tune, I, I think I actually tried to get you to put some music up there. You put a couple of tracks, right? Chris? Yep. Yeah, I've got some up there. So, you know, the platform was I had full some. Of, like really shitty music, and mm -hmm. the, like a lot of people abused it and gave the system because it was open. Like anyone could go upload their music, which you could say, "Hey, that's cool," but yeah. it also presents a whole bunch of problems for everyone involved that's legitimately trying to use yeah. it for the purpose. You know? Yeah, you couldn't find much like the all the top like playlists were already like botted, so like it was just oh, like garbage really up at the top. And, yeah. yeah, so the the people, you know, what we're doing now, and this this is this is not just emergent. This is also by design. Is kind of cultivating a 
community full of early adopters and stakeholders that really, really care about the project. I mean, if you're still here, if you're the Reg, uh, if you're uh, Midwest, you know, if, uh, if you're, I don't know. Uh, Jay Pizzle, Data, most of, most of the people. Yeah, here. yeah. Crafty Beard, uh, mm -hmm. Downtown, you know, the OGs, and you're still supporting record shop then you really really care i mean it, i think it transcends just looking out for your for your holdings right like a lot of them say they care about being part of the future of music cool you you are going to be the kingpins of this you know of this new order that we're creating where you can make or break artists you know and you maybe you want to play that game maybe you don't but i think a lot of you will because it's actually going to be very rewarding not just monetarily but also just in terms of being a cool thing to spend your time on. El Jefe, shout out. Yeah. You know, o I think OGs can still vote you in, El Jefe. <laughs> there's, a, there's a mechanism for becoming blue. Top secret. Yeah. Um, Rye Guy says, is there a scenario where coins can get a percentage of secondary fees? How? Ever small it may be, like make the entire supply of coins worth even one percent of fees. Um, we we are absolutely have mechanisms for making it worth your while. It's not going to be as straightforward as you might think, but it's also super cool and will be unique to to record shop. But yeah, obviously we're not. You, you know, we're interested in in the bulk of. The you know what there is to be won in the early days to to go to the people that have been here since the start and, and really had faith along the line, like we we are looking at the things that go along with launching the token. I'll say I don't want to get too specific, but we are looking at the sort of things that happen when you launch the token, and we are definitely not just looking to reward the people who were here at the very beginning or the people who are still now or the whales or whatever, like I'm very, very interested in rewarding the people who have been with us consistently, right? Because that's, that's what I said from before, from the very start, right? Like I used to say it at least once a week or, or whatever, like if you're here and you have faith and you believe in us and you support this project, you will get rewarded, right? Like I never, I never said exactly how other than, you know, your collectibles will be worth more, et cetera, like that. But of course we had other ways that we had in mind. Love it. <clears throat> hmm. Got caught um, in my voice there. There's other questions I want to get to as well that were pretty cool. Um, the Reg says, what's more likely one of the artists on Record Shop blows up and sends Record Shop to the moon or Record Shop brings in an artist that people lose their minds for? Um, probably the latter <laughs> in terms of being more likely. I mean, we live in such a fragmented cultural environment right like not even pop not even pop stars are as popular as they used to be right like it, it's a really interesting phenomenon like pop music even though it's still a huge massive monolith is, is smaller than it's ever been hmm, i didn't know um, that yeah i saw a report on that the other day oh wow um hit well like Hits come and go like very rapidly, and like hits are making less of an impact on popular culture than they ever have. Mm. Been. Um, everything is like pretty, pretty fragmented. Mm -hmm. um, Baller said it's no secret that the marketplace has been something of a ghost town lately. What are the plans to get the market activity going again to get things back to where they were early on? That I mean. Everything that we're everything that we're doing is in service of building excitement. We do have some aces of our up our sleeve that we're planning to pull that we're waiting on significant functionality being available so that we could pull the trigger on those. I'll I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I mean, for me too, though, it's been good to see a lot more movement in between mixing and the BPM challenges. I think it's, it's helped a whole lot. And, you know, now that we're doing pack drops again and can do proper challenges with like full artist attention, I think we're going to see a lot more of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely picked up already since we re released mixing, mm -hmm. which, is, which is really nice to see. And then I, I think, um, so one, one of the things I've been, putting a lot of work into is 
figuring out our onboarding strategy and the starter packs have worked out really well, by the way. So we're up to about 1300 sold. We're selling. Oh, nice. We're selling about five to 10 a day to new users that are coming in. So, so that's worked and we haven't even optimized or done any AB testing or anything like that. I'm thinking the next step is to add kind of like genre specific starter packs. So that's a nugget. Um, someone said Wendy B drum and bass. We have so many cool drum and bass artists. And um, like just today I said to, to Byron who leads up content production, I was like, um, see if you can get us a, like a starter pack that focuses on drum and bass or something, you know, it's just, it's been kind of hard to get content out of those creators for whatever reason that I don't actually know. Um, yeah, but that onboarding, I was talking about like onboarding. One thing that will get the market moving is, is onboarding, uh, more people who are willing to invest in the future of the market. And I was talking to some people that run other marketplaces, uh, through some efforts I've been doing in water and music, which is like kind of an industry working group that does a lot of web three stuff. And I found something out, which I wasn't aware of, which is that a lot of these other NFT marketplaces do like personal outreach to buyers of NFTs, meaning that they actually spend the time to go out and hunt, uh, people who are collectors, like big time collectors willing to spend money. So I I think that's part of what's been missing is that like the existing group of early adopters is pretty tapped out and, you know, they don't necessarily want to make big ticket purchases. That's totally understandable. Um, You know, some might be just tapped out because they're waiting for withdrawals, which um, are already happening in a limited capacity. Dapper wallet support is coming and we've been talking about that quite a bit, I think in, in the chat or have we, I don't know. I am getting mixed up. It, it's been a subject. It's, I know you laughed, but I mean, a lot of things. No, been, it's a lot. I know. But yeah. We've, we've been chatting about it a little bit for sure. So, so we're working on Dapper wallet support. Un- unfortunately, like one of the reasons it's taking so long, it's a complete in, in inverting of the way that the smart contracts work because the money will flow through the smart contract. And right now it doesn't. Um, to put that, like, um, to, to talk specifically about what that means is that like, when you, when person A pays person B in the marketplace, the, the money that they're paying goes from their dapper wallet to the other people, person's dapper wallet. And then we get a cut to our wallet. Uh, whereas right now the opposite is true, which is like the money goes to us and then we keep a ledger with the amount that we owe that, that person. So for everyone that's frustrated about, you know, all this stuff, it's like very, very complicated code that, that, and a lot of it is new and a lot, a lot of it we haven't had to write because we integrated with Shopify and that was kind of our marketplace mechanic. But now that we're integrated with Dapper wallet, which we've been doing now for, for over a month, it has to work through the, the Dapper, um, through the flow blockchain NFT marketplace smart contracts and the money has to flow through there. Completely different accounting, completely different reporting, completely different everything. I mean, it's just, it's just a huge amount of work that's really, really hard to convey, right? Like, and, yeah. and if, I had, if I had more time, I'd write a freaking blog post about it. Like we've talked about, you know, someone on the engineering team kind of laying it all out. Um, and I know it's super frustrating and, and hats off to the community team. You know, oh, for, 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 for we, I mean, it sucks, man. Like to, like I know that there's some people that just don't get tired of asking one withdrawals, one withdrawals, one withdrawals. You know, and it's really, really hard. I wish, I, I wish we had, you know, better, <laughs> something better to offer at the moment. It's really painful that we don't like believe us as much as it's annoying to you that you can't easily withdraw right now. It's like a hundred million times more annoying to us because it's like such a small part of the puzzle. And, you know, when we're talking about features and it takes such a disproportionate amount of attention compared to where we're going to go. But as soon as Dapper Wallet integration is placed, we will literally have nothing to do with withdrawals. Like withdrawals will work exactly the same way as they work with NBA Top Shot and any other Dapper Wallet product. Like we literally have zero to do with it. The money will go, you know, in there, it will go to your wallet, and then you have full control over it with Dapper Wallet policies. End of story. So, so we're super, nice. super, we're super super excited about that feature, and uh, we're working really really hard to get there. And I don't want to make any promises, but I mean, I I think by 
I think we should have some significant progress to at least announce by the end of the quarter for sure. Yeah, that's super exciting. And for me, big shout out to the to the not community team, the support team. You know, they've been really, really working hard to make the manual withdrawal process like a real process that we can start offering to people on a limited basis. And uh, it's been yeah, and I, you know, I want to I want to make a public apology to you and to Mia and the support team I because I, I know the other day there was a, there was a miscommunication about like the timing of announcements and stuff like that. And I was kind of playing around and someone said, you know, can we get some announcements about an announcement? So, um, you know, there, there is the, there is the more automated withdrawal process with a form and status and all that stuff coming along. It doesn't mean you'll get your mute, your money like the next day or anything like that, but that is probably going to be deployed uh, very soon this week. And I wanted to give people something to look forward to. So that they stop, <laughs> you know, kind of, or so that not that they stop, but that they see that we do care about it and we are working. Yeah, on it. yeah, and that's that's really the most important part. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, that all of our hard work is proven to something they can actually use. Yeah. But yeah, no, no need to apologize. You know, we all want the best for our customers, and you know, sometimes we have different ways of making that happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, the best, Chris. <laughs> no, of course. Um. Uh, there's an interesting question in here. Oh, by the way, just a final note on Dapper Wallet. What everyone thinks, like universally thinks, is that once Dapper Wallet supports in, it's going to really pump the secondary marketplace because it's a lot of liquidity. It's like millions of dollars of liquidity that's available to easily buy stuff on the marketplace, right? Um, and there's a, there's a couple of other significant changes that are, that are going to make it significantly easier to to buy stuff in the marketplace that I'm I'm consider that a hint. I don't want to talk too much more publicly about it, but but between those two factors, I, I think it will be a lot. There's another question from Rai Guy here. Um, you feel pressure to create utility that justifies the price of collectibles, or vice versa, like when you see OGAF, which may have originated as a tip of the cap turn into a $1,600 set, do you feel you have to recalibrate to offer times the amount of value? Um, maybe. Um, we were frankly as surprised as everyone else that it kind of spiked that high and like it was also unnerving and kind of disturbing in certain ways. Um, do we create feel pressure to create utility? Yes, but at the same time, it's hard to create utility you know just like that like you know it's, there there's um organizational processes that go along with uh with utility there is um you know like investment and in, in functionality there's um there's so many things right like there's there's so many aspects of utility beyond just the thing that it does right like there has like support team needs to be aware of it community has to be aware of it um there's often like unforeseen side effects like we saw that early on right like we roll something out and you know things would go crazy um like some people are concerned about coins and burning and what it does to the value of the collectibles and things like that like i don't want to sweep that under the rug i i know that there's people concerned about that and we we know what it means and like we know we we know what's coming with that um it's just complicated it's a very complicated situation it's a, and it's you know it's complex and we we realize and this this was a hard learning experience for the first few months that since you're dealing with people's money you know you got to be super fucking careful um what you say what hints you give like there all sorts of things move markets and i think we learned the hard way that it, you know, whatever utility you introduce has to be really well considered, right? Um, so, I mean, that, that's what I'll say about that. Uh, is combining artist cards that would produce a collab track on the horizon? You know what I would love to see in here? I'm that's like, cool. purely, I'm just purely speculating. Thanks, Phileas, for, for, <laughs> for the idea. We had some, I had a similar thought about this, where like the more that you the more that players uh, combine a certain card, like the more of a bounty is created for those two artists to collaborate and produce something from it. 
So it could be the sort of thing where nothing comes of it, but if something does come of it, then those artists claim the reward. And oh, that would be cool. people that combined it get the NFT that comes out of it. Right? Interesting. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like a bounty pool we, of we, coins we or a, whatever. We need, a, we need a catchy name for that. But when I when I say that crafting mixing is the foundation of so much cool new utility, there's an example, right? Because how would you implement that? You would implement that as mixing two artists together and then getting like probably a result that's like half and half or something. You know what I mean? And that combined thing, if held, would have some sort of reward associated with it for the collaboration. Because, because it's no trivial thing to get two artists to collaborate. You know what I mean? And, that, yeah. and that's what makes it kind of cool, right? Like you're speculating in that point. It's almost like gambling, I guess, that you're going to get something out of that result. But you might not. <laughs> like you, you might just have this combo card that's, you know, near worthless because it's not there. But but like that, the fact that we can actually create that now, to, to me, just blows my mind. <laughs> Right? Like there's very, very little obstacles to us creating that right now. Like literally just going and hacking it up using our recipe creator. So um, keep the ideas coming and suggestions for sure. You know, like there, there's a lot of stuff we want to roll out. I love that idea. That would be really cool <laughs> for the <laughs> like force artists to collaborate. They might not normally for the, for the right reward. Well, cool. give, not force them, but give them. Yeah, give yeah, them. Yeah, that's what I don't mean force, but, right. you know, yeah strong stronger incentive than normally possible <laughs> yeah i mean and we, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pretend like we thought of that first but like i knew when we started out with the artist cards that there would be really cool uses for the artist cards specifically you know what i mean mm -hmm. like like the artist cards are a building block that's not makes it not just a baseball card except of a producer right you know, it's it's a it's a fundamental building block for different kinds of games you could play like that you know like like paul will kill me but like one of the one of the earlier things that i said we wanted to do with artist cards was the this idea of um putting um artists head to head and like having some sort of like battle <laughs> you know like that that seemed that seems pretty amazing to me mm -hmm. uh but but paul was like no don't do that <laughs> <laughs> come on dj battles are a thing yeah i guess maybe not so much in dance music mm -hmm. what else i think have? that's i think that's all the questions that's pretty are, much it oh, lisa says when we released the new marketplace last week was that purely ui improvements or was it some coming off shopify so i actually i i thought we were a little further off shopify than we actually were uh, apparently Full, going fully off Shopify still a few weeks out. Mm. Um, but hopefully people are getting a lot of um, benefit out of the new marketplace. Yeah, I saw a lot of excitement for it. I like It looks really nice. looks really good. Yeah. Um, Man, I see a lot of requests for merch here. Might have to raise that one up on the priority list. <laughs> Yeah, I got to I got to see who can handle that. Maybe we can get Mario to kind of look into that. Um, oh, that'd be cool. As a special project. Um Yeah, maybe I won't say any more about that so it can be a surprise. But <laughs> <laughs> If it makes everyone in chat feel better, the rest of the company is asking for their record shop hats and t-shirts as well. <laughs> I had to go all the way to Mexico to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what? I did have some cool data that I wanted to share. Maybe you can speak to Obi. Um, okay. It's pretty exciting. This is actually uh, Andrew put this slide together. Let me see if I can find it again. Um, I think one thing that you know we're going to work on moving forward, especially as we you know, continue to improve the platform is just kind of showing what, like you're talking about, like you, how much you've contributed to an artist. Um, let me pull this up here. Uh, but this is a really cool chart of just kind of like, you know, what the platform with all of your support has really done and what it actually means to artists. And it's, it's really, really huge. It's incredible. Um, 
So we were talking about like the payouts versus streaming. Um, when the snapshot was taken, we're talking about $638,000 in artist payouts uh, just from record shop support. And for those artists to get that on Spotify streams would be $159 million, which is pretty crazy. Um, I mean, even getting a million streams for an artist is really, really difficult. 159 million of them <laughs> is pretty insane. Um, so I just wanted to like kind of bring this up and like show people that it is making a huge difference. Like, you know, what, you know, really valuing music and investing in these artists, like it's not even like a small amount. And you can even see, you know, some of the other platforms, like this is huge, like in Web3 overall, like what it's doing for these artists. It's, it's not an insignificant amount of money. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's remarkable and yeah, it just goes to show how little streaming pays. <laughs> like I, I, I see the future, um, you know, for artists being a mix where, you know, 80% of their money or more comes from things like record shop and Spotify streaming is kind of like the radio. Like mm -hmm. you, you do it because you want to have exposure. You want people to easily be able to find you. Um, you know, as a discovery mechanism, but you don't live, you don't pay your rent with that money, right? It's just a little something, something extra. If you get yeah. anything, which most people don't. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, no, it's a good question here from Jay Pizzle. Like, why is it difficult to get artists to participate? And I don't know that I'd say it is difficult to get artists to participate necessarily. For a lot of people, it's, it's brand new. And like, you know, they want to see how it goes for other people first. And I think from our first, you know, six months, we're already seeing the the tide shift. I think you've seen that as well, right, Obi? Um, on on artist sentiment and whether like how how much they're willing to get involved. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's just brand new, right? Like no one wants to be the first person to put out CDs because no one has CD players, right? It's kind of like in that same that same vein. But like once you realize that's really where it's going to be, um, you know, by the time by the time that's happened, it's kind of too late to be early right um and we're, we're seeing a lot of a lot of artists that are starting to understand that and you know getting a lot more engaged providing a lot more content um you know we're, we're really excited to see that you know they're excited and they're they've been largely quite happy with with the way we've been able to to help them you know bolster their income with all of your help and all of your support so really appreciate it you know, what's not shown in here is how much um, those other platforms have generated in payouts to Ethereum miners in the form of gas fees, including from people who th were not able to buy the drop. <laughs> and oh, spent that would be interesting. It. it happened to me and I got really pissed off. Oh, like I was man. I buy a sound XYZ drop just to see what it was about. And my gas fees were lost and I didn't get anything because it was, you know, I guess didn't use high enough gas fees or it wasn't quick enough in the draw or whatever wow yeah that is pretty disheartening yeah. and i and i i don't you know i i guess it's our channel i don't mind throwing some shade on royal i mean their their business model is still such that everyone is scratching their head about how their nfts could possibly be worth anything in the long term you know so unless they have some rabbit to pull out of a hat it's just bullshit and the other day i was talking about I was on an NFT uh, oriented Twitter spaces and Blau came on there and he, he was crashing the party. He wasn't even an invited panelist. And like, I, you know, the question to the panel was about um, the dark side of NFTs or things that worried us about, you know, the industry. And I just said that I was worried about getting real music fans and that it was obvious that, you know, the buyers of a lot of these music NFTs were just speculators, uh, which is shit that should be, not you know not arguable right? yeah it's not really controversial in my opinion and blau piped up and like proceeded to you know basically try to discredit us and shit on us yeah it was and, rough yeah and i and i was like wow okay like and, and actually i was flattered because you know he his royalty pardon the pun you know in the <laughs> nft space because of what he did last year but like he really, really should be careful to throw stones because you know there there are there is dirty laundry around you know who actually bought his NFTs and why they might have done so and stuff like that back in the day. And when you look at who's actually buying the NAS 
NFTs, I mean, a lot of those were were flipped almost immediately. I mean, he'll, he'll defend it, you know, and he did on that space by saying, oh, well, that's the way that the market finds the right price. <laughs> you know, those NFTs, and I would counter that that's also the way that the market finds the greater fool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's just... You know, I, I think what we're doing in the long term play here, you know, with adding a lot of utility and a lot of gamification and a lot of interest, interesting kind of facets. Like I said, the ability to break new artists, uh, the ability to do cool things with your collectibles, you know, that that sort of thing is, the way, is I think that's the way to go. Way more than like anything that involves sharing royalties. Yeah, that was an intense conversation. It was it was hard to listen to, but yeah, you know, I was glad that you represented the company well. It was yeah, I didn't was I, inspiring. I didn't, wanna, I didn't wanna come back like so hard because I was like, okay, well this is not someone I necessarily want as a total enemy, but Yeah. But uh and also I was trying to be polite. <laughs> you did better than I think I could have, that's for sure. Followers and that's not something to sneeze at <laughs> compared to my ten thousand or whatever. <laughs> No, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for what we're doing and like, you know, I mean, these are just the numbers from a snapshot who knows what tomorrow will bring the, yeah. the, the main point here is just like, you know, what artists can do in, you know, with the support of fans that believe in their music and like are willing to pay for, you know, quality products. It, it makes a big difference, you know, and Spotify basically can't do that you know it's not that spotify i don't want to say that they're yeah i mean it's not that like it's not, like i don't really think spotify could pay double and even if they did it wouldn't really fix the problem right rye guy says why can't record shop have a royal aspect artists don't want to share their royalties royalties are really really small other than for pop artists who literally mm -hmm. don't need the money like the people who can afford to share the royalties don't need the money. Yeah. Like it's literally just a way of, of getting uh, money up front. And Royal is completely unoriginal when it comes to sharing royalties. There's something called Royalty Exchange that's been around for years that lets you invest in royalty streams. Like go check mm -hmm. it out. Royaltyexchange.com. Um, you know what little what little royalty stream you get from streaming platforms like you don't want to share those the only reason that royal.io exists in this way is because because of speculation you know people are willing to pay a lot more than those royalty streams are actually worth yeah i don't know and like i hear the argument that people that are invested in the artist will help it help them get more exposure but like as an artist, I don't know if I well, want. That's what, like, that's what I want as an artist is people supporting my music because they're going to make money off of it. No. Yeah, exactly. That's like that's, that's it feels so feels so just kind of like dirty, I guess. Um, and it's it almost feels like you're just asking your fans to give you an advance instead of the record label or whoever you typically work with, which also feels kind of backwards. You're you're asking people else to give you an advance, which I'm all for. Like you know, if you can get that money, get that money. But I'm just saying it's not a sustainable business model, and it's not really something I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Even before you start to take into account like securities regulations and the fact that those are securities, and you would get, you know, with without spending millions upon millions and millions of dollars in legal you know expenses, you would get eventually sued out of existence for selling unregulated securities. Like yeah, pretty crazy. Like when, when you have any sort of participation and upside for artists that you support on record shop, it will be because you did part of the work to break that artist. There is no non participatory gains that we will do on record shop. I don't believe in them. Like there, there is no going long on an artist, right? Like where you're, you're placing a bet in the way that you would buy a stock that it's going to go up. Um, and you have nothing to do with it other than you put some money into it. Like, I just don't believe in it because as an artist, I know that as cool as it would be for someone to go long on my upcoming album, it would also really suck to have people go short, you know, and, and that's inevitable. Like that's where it would, that's where it would go mm -hmm. anywhere where there's a way to speculate and have derivatives tra trading. On yeah. People the idea of derivatives on artists is insane. <laughs> like Derivatives on artists just means that people will seek alpha, which is a fancy way of saying that they want the volatility. 
And volatility in that context means you as an artist are in a fucking emotional roller coaster. Because now you're not just worried about popularity, you're worried about the value of your of your stock, you know, as an artist. It's it's fucking insane. Like mm. I, I don't I don't like it. Um, yeah. I, I don't agree with it. And that that's referred to as the financialization of everything. Mm. Uh, which to, to me, frankly, maybe I'm just old school, but it's a dystopian nightmare waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. and just go for it. <laughs> as long as you're not buying puts. <laughs> Wait, is it called? Did I get that backwards? I used to have a series seven and sixty three back in the day. It was a long time ago. What is that? I actually worked for the company that inspired the boiler room when I was really, really young, like right wow. out. Wow. And I had a series seven and sixty three. Uh, certification to sell stocks and worked in a boiler room <laughs> oh i didn't know that that's what that was called so ob card holders that got my pdf book and actually read it would know that because i wrote a chapter about how i got there and, and got out of it <laughs> the nachos yeah the nachos book. um one more nugget on the secret mixing recipe no Sorry. <laughs> but if you find it, the new rule is you're not allowed to say anything about it or you get kicked from uh, Discord. <laughs> the first rule of Mix Club is you can't talk about Mix Club. <laughs> I like that. Maybe we should make that a real rule. You Sorry. really should, actually. As I, was, <laughs> as I was typing into Discord a minute ago, I was like, this must, this must be the way it works. <laughs> Um, um what is this? aren't we doing that anyways if artists do nothing on record shop their cards fall flat if they're active they go through the roof uh sure <laughs> if you say so <laughs> it's not really exactly the same though the the sec treats collectibles as a different thing is the reason you're not getting charged capital gains on your uh on your pokemon cards and shit like that Update on Series A funding, update on HQ set re reward. Uh, update on Series A funding, it's just begun. Um, although I'm not like totally down that fucking rabbit hole yet, um, mm. but I will be very soon. And I have a feeling that it's... <laughs> All right. Uh -oh. Can I uh -oh. say something about HQ set rewards? Did I just say something about HQ set rewards? Not that I heard. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about HQ set rewards. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, how many cards in secret? Nope. Not saying anything. <laughs> They're really trying to, get, trying to get those nuggets out today. Yeah. So many nuggets in here. All right. Uh, why is it so difficult to get artists to participate? You know, that was one we kind of glossed over, right? Uh oh, is why is it so difficult to get artists on the platform? I think was the question, right? No, I think to participate is a different. I, t I have a different. I take a different meaning from that. It's like basically okay, them to get engaged. On, on yeah, this maybe I misinterpreted yeah. it then. Yeah, so I mean, we can, we can talk about that for the last five minutes, and then we gotta go. But yeah, um, cool. I think it's kind of what I was referring to earlier when I mentioned the founders of Nifty Gateway, right? It's like artists get up every morning and they want to be better at the thing that made them famous and they actually want to protect their reputations in ways that are kind of incompatible with getting too deep down the rabbit hole right like for every bt who like has gone all in on crypto right and like literally not giving a fuck about what it might mean for his reputation like to him it's a good thing right because he sees it as an innovation as uh as being out in front which, by the way, he literally has always been out in front, like throughout his entire career, right? Mm -hmm. So that's very compatible with him. But for every BT, there's like 10,000 other artists who are not BT, have not been out in front, <laughs> you know, have no interest in being out in front because loss aversion is a thing. And they're very, very scared of losing the fans that they have. And that's why year after year after year, they put out the same kind of music. 
right? And they not, they don't change up the recipe or they diverge very slowly from it because they're being conservative. That's fine. Like, that's fine. That's normal. I'm not even criticizing anyone that's like that. But that does answer why is it hard? Because it represents change. It represents a different engagement model. It represents risks. You know, like uh, making a big splash on your social media about the NFTs that you're putting out is guaranteed to get you some people throwing shit at you. You know, a bunch of monkeys will throw their feces at you saying, oh, you're, you know, you're fucking the earth or you're a sellout or, you know, NFTs suck. And people are scared of that, right? So that's why I'm super, super anxious to open the platform up. The more creators, you know, smaller independent artists that are like really gung ho. Like people are blowing up my phone almost every day. Um, people in my network, like extended network, right? The, the, the latest one was, um, I don't know if I should say, um, a, an artist from Black Hole, I'll, I'll leave it at that, so, who, who does a lot of stuff on, on, on his own. And we, we had a conversation, it's like, the, the people who have appetite will seek it out and I think they will engage, right? Just like Disco Fries is, is, is a good example, right? Um, the ones who we recruit and we're like, hey, this is a good opportunity for you, like a lot of them don't necessarily get it or they might be excited, but they're not willing to take risks and that's why it's hard to get them to engage, right? So... Uh, you will not find any pictures of me in drag <laughs> because I am a really, really ugly girl. Like, you see this? Very hard to make this up. And he only knows that from that one time there was a picture of him in drag. There were no <laughs> I made sure there were no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not against drag. I love drag. I love drag shows. I had yeah. fun in drag. Um, you didn't see me in drag? It was at a burn. No. Like, maybe it was, it was before I started going to the, the local rooms. Before the big trans camp, I think. Oh, uh, I think that was our first one, was the trans camp one. So okay. I missed it. I'm just an ugly girl. I'm, I'm very, I have very masculine features and like a lot of hair and stuff. And it's just... You don't have to brag too much on stream, Obi. <laughs> if I can, if I can drag up a uh, picture of me and drag, I will make sure that combo works. <laughs> Good use of Obi cards. I have very strong doubts that that exists. <laughs> bear card. <laughs> now, me dressed up in bear gear. No, also no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, yeah, I know it's getting late. Thanks for hanging out so long. I know, uh, I know you I know you're both very busy. Thanks for hanging out with us too, Poria. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Great, great work on crafting. Make yes, thank thank round you. of applause for Poria. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Love it. We're All just right. getting started with it too. Cool. Yeah. All right, friends. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us, Obi. Bye, everyone. Yep. Thanks, Chris. See you all soon. Yeah, of course. Have a good night.